Hello everyone, this is Crote giving you a shoutcast in a game between I am MVP versus Old School here on Shakura's Plateau. I am MVP spawning as the Red Terran player on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, Old School spawning on the left hand side of the map as the Blue Terran. Terran versus Terran here on Shakura's Plateau. It is a mirror match and I, w and I was thinking to myself, you know, with so many of the GSL players being Terran, and in the finals, there's going to be a lot of mirror matches, so I better study up on this Terran versus Terran mirror match. Now, I am MVP, was your MLG Anaheim winner. Very, very strong Terran versus Terran. Also, not too shabby in the GSL as well. So we'll see what he does against old school here. And we may see some pretty good micro or uh, macro coming out. Shakura's Plateau is a rather larger map. And with a larger map there may be a lot more opportunities to say set up an expansion and then try to do an eventual push after you are able to defend against your opponent because there is a ramp right here units up on the high ground with bunkers can start firing on the low ground units well before those low ground units are within sight range this is patch 136 though so with patch 136 that means that we will not have um, the units still have that plus one sight range up ramps and also blue flame hellions deal that 24 damage to scvs now one of the things that i am happy about is that the blue flame hellions um, they're not going to be that destructive in terran versus terran um, even against the other races if you get the blue flame hellion research and then get the level one weapons upgrade you are able to two-shot any workers as long as they don't have any armor um, or, you know, the carapace upgrade, the shield upgrade, or the armor upgrade from Protoss. But in a Terran versus Terran, that's simply not the case because these SCVs have 45 hit points. 45 hit points meaning that it, they will normally take three shots in order to be destroyed. As we now see, I am MVP also setting up a front door supply depot here. That means that most likely he will be training up a lot more marines and then he will be able to transition into a command center perhaps off in this location and perhaps even trying to set up a bunker down here. You can see that the supply depot is up and you can see that there is one marine down here on the low ground waiting to try to intercept this one particular marine. Oh, it's going to be a marine coming in. As this SCV is over here on the far side, you can see no additional Marines are being trained. So there's just going to be one Marine on the high ground against this Marine over here. He's trying to activate those Onaga Watchtowers. You can see that there's still an SCV hiding off over here by MVP. So he's going to be able to get a decent amount of scouting. And now we're going to see who's really going to win out here. I am MVP finally going into that double refinery. He has not harvested one ounce of gas yet. So he is going to be behind. And now if you see old school perhaps going into a factory with those blue flame hellions. That may spell almost certain doom or trouble as MVP. Oh going to lose that scouting SCV there. Three marines in position. The command center about two thirds of the way done. You're going to have two marines up on the high ground and now shooting that SCV. The SCV not going to be able to make it up either as we finally have enough gas um, or getting close to enough gas in order to build a factory. But it will be significantly behind as we are now adding on that tech lab for old school. You can see that he has a large amount of gas saved up which means either a marine tank push or blue flame hellions and it looks like it will be a tank push. As we are now going into a starport. So this is the standard 111 coming in from old school. And this should be really effective against I am MVP. I am MVP. And he's going to be late in getting his factory. He's going to be late in getting those siege tanks. And if the siege tanks on the low ground. Along with one medevac are able to spot. That's going to just um, destroy any static defense that MVP has. MVP will have to then try to buy time. Lift off his com orbital command once again. Until he can get back up here onto the high ground and then use siege tanks on the high ground in order to fight back one siege tank a second siege tank there's the scanner sweep and old school now opting to go for a viking instead of for of a meta back so he will ha definitely have air superiority as you can now see mvp now trying to train up or add a reactor onto his barracks i do not think it will be up in time 
as MVP now realizes that he has opened up with the wrong build. He, I'm not sure if he will be able to defend this very easily at all. Siege tech now being started. I wish it was started just a little bit earlier. Um, perhaps he was behind on gas. No, it looks like he had enough gas at the time. Um, and this is really going to come down to the wire. Will old school get that siege tech in time in order to start blasting at this bunker? Or will MVP perhaps be able to get siege tanks and siege tech of his own to defend? The window of opportunity is quickly closing. The Viking is in the air, though, and it's going to quickly spot that there is a bunker over there. It needs to back off, and the Marines getting some easy damage onto that Viking as Marines are now pushing in once more. Siege Tank will be sieging up, but it still does not have Siege Tank 25 seconds away, and this is horrible, horrible news as a Banshee now being trained up as well by Old School. We currently have one SCV there. We are getting a Viking out by MVP. MVP will get that Viking down, perhaps reclaim air superiority, and if Old School loses this Viking, that means that this, um, yeah, the Vikings are going to be able to do very much. And now the Siege Tank should be blasting at the SCVs. It needs to hit the SCVs as the SCVs are just going to constantly repair. The Viking now being forced to pull back there. It looks like a lot of SCVs are coming in. Siege Tank from IM MVP not yet in Siege mode. It can Siege up. We'll see. We'll wait we'll, and we'll see what's going to happen here as MVP is going to be able to start blasting away. And Old School going to lose his tank over here. And this is a horrible, horrible mistake. One Siege Tank going to get destroyed. And Old School... The timing on his attack just needed to be about 20 seconds faster. And I think if he had started this siege tech sooner, he that would have been a completely different story. Perhaps destroying more SCVs there. And then if he had not overcommitted with his Viking... He would have been able to keep up a high hit point Viking and it would have been able to extend the siege much longer. And MVP narrowly escaping that early, early pressure and now with a sizable advantage. There is one Banshee back over here. The Banshee is now currently waiting for that cloaking field to be completed. You can see um, you can see that there are Vikings in the air and oh, um, easy Marine may be able to get off another shot here. The, and the Viking is very low on hit points. It cannot survive one round of attack from these two vikings and there it goes quickly getting taken down and old school really needs to retreat oh losing a squadron of marines there now it looks like a banshee is going to be coming in from the top side it does have cloak and now rushing in to deal a lot of damage and um, one scv down two scvs down already we'll see what the overall worker kill count will be already getting up another already getting up to what five kills six kills now as it continues to maximize its damage there it is there's the cloak no scanner sweep available at any of the locations engineering bay now being built there's one scanner sweep and it down goes one Banshee, but I don't believe enough damage was dealt. 40 compared to 28. We'll see how that's all going to work out. Army composition, though, you can see that MVP has a larger army, so Old School will not be able to capitalize on his economic advantage um, for quite some time as his army is still smaller and he's not going to be able to continue that pressure. Now, taking a look at the unit count, four siege tanks, two Vikings, 18 Marines against one siege tank, six Marauders, three Marines. The Marauders, if they're able to perhaps push in with a drop, perhaps with some medevacs, that may be enough. There are a lot of siege tanks down here. There are Marines as well. We'll see how this is all going to work out old school. Currently sitting with a pretty sizable economic advantage, but he really needs to translate that somehow into more destructive damage. Otherwise, his opponent is just going to be able to macro back in. You can see that there's currently one missile turret as well, and the Vikings are nearby. So this one missile turret going to um, shut down any more Banshee play, and there is a supply depot over here. As we now see a squadron of Marines and Siege Tanks on the move, the Medevac going to quickly be spotted by the supply depot here does need a, 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 a what a need to push it over here and there's the stim the vikings are going to be able to push in and destroy that medevac the, however the marauders are now going to go straight in here and get some damage onto some scv so nicely done getting in a lot of damage so far medevacs now coming in but the scvs are having a very difficult time as the marauders are just kiting all of those scv units and now old school really coming in and dealing the necessary damage that i was mentioning Siege tanks were able to pull over, but even more worker kills. 31 now compared to 52 as I am MVP looking to do a counter drop of his own. And there is nothing to really go. Um, to, there, there's nothing that old school can really do to counter this. He has nothing inside his main base. And this is going to be really bad news if a drop does in fact go down. 
As you can now see, a medevac here, some marines, some siege tanks are on the move here. In comes the drop from MVP, and MVP dropping in. He does have stim as well. SCVs are on the run. You can see marauders are trying to come back as well, and the marauders are going to be trying to heat up here. MVP still with the larger army at this point. Marines trying to push in, but the siege tanks are going to clear all that up in just a matter of seconds as the Marines are just destroying so many SCVs and old school getting destroyed now after a, what, a couple a very small drop a very small tactical drop able to deal a lot of damage there's only one siege tank over here on the front door that's gonna be a problem a second siege tank needs to be added as you can now see SAB though the marauder is gonna try to push in and that siege tank down to 13 hit points and this is gonna be a problem if that siege tank goes down there's nothing gonna be to stop this line of tanks and wow MVP able to destroy old school's last tank now and this is not looking good at all for Old School. Old School currently does still have a slight economic advantage, but his army advantage is nowhere near or, or nowhere to be had as the tanks are just slowly stair-stepping their way in. Old School does the classic mistake of picking up units with his medevac and now able to drop them in, perhaps to try to um, destroy some siege banks, but there is the GG. So I am MVP playing a very, very solid Terran versus Terran, able to push off that one one base, the Marine siege tank, also able to defend against that Banshee harassment, countered with a Marine drop of his own, dealing a lot of damage as Old School never had a large enough army to really fight back against I am MVP. Thanks for watching. Thanks for living. Thanks for listening. Thanks for living. Yeah, and um, thanks for listening. And oh, um, I, I know I gave a little bit. If you guys are still listening, I don't know why you would. Um, if you guys are still listening to me, I, I gave a little bit of a definition on decimate, and people were saying, no, no, you can still use decimate as to mean a lot of units completely destroyed or just completely decimated, as that has you know become vernacular. That's become the new definition, but. I, I don't know. I maybe maybe it's a personal thing that if if a word can be used for two definitions and those two definitions are so far from far apart from each other to say one out of ten units has been destroyed or nine out of ten units have been destroyed, I should just try to refrain from using decimate decimate at all. Anyways, well thanks for watching. Thanks thanks for listening to my little bit of a rant here and stay tuned for game two.